This is a video presentation of Chapter 3, Section 10 in the 7th grade textbook entitled Dividing Fractions and Mixed Numbers. So, obviously, we've done adding, we've done subtracting, we've done multiplying. So now all we have left to do is dividing. So it not only does it make sense in that regard, and that it's the last operation we have to do, but dividing is really defined by multiplication. So not only does it make sense because it's the last operation, but because we just learned to multiply, we really already know how to divide. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the definitions here. Reciprocal, that's one of two numbers whose product is one. Now, some of you are sitting there thinking, well, that's not what I think of when I think of reciprocal. When I think of reciprocal, I think about taking a fraction and flipping it. You're right, that is what a reciprocal is. Reciprocal is when you take and you flip that fraction around. For instance, if the fraction was something like 2 thirds, its reciprocal would be 3 over 2. Well, how does that make sense with the definition? Well, multiply them together and see if it gives you exactly what it says. If I do 2 over 3 times 3 over 2, not even going to worry about reducing, the result is 6 over 6, which equals 1. Well, that's exactly what the definition would said would happen. All right? It's two numbers that when I multiply them together, their product is 1. So even though that's a little bit different than maybe what you thought of for the word reciprocal, it's actually a very good definition for the word reciprocal. All right, and then we've got multiplicative inverse. That's simply the reciprocal of a number. The inverse property is a property that fits right along with commutative and associative and identity and all of those. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at some examples here. Number one, they're asking us to divide and to write the answer in simplest form. And we've got 3 sevenths divided by 2 fifths. Now, I have no question in my mind that you've divided fractions before. What I do worry about, it's not a huge worry, but I worry about it, is do you remember what you're absolutely doing perfectly 100%? When you divide fractions, what you do is you're actually multiplying by the reciprocal, which means two things needs to happen. Right? The first thing is, is that this division sign needs to get changed into multiplication, which as you can see from the first line to the second line has indeed happened. And then what you have to do is you have to take it and change it to the reciprocal. Flip the second fraction. And that's one thing that worries me. I want to make sure you're flipping the fraction that's after the division sign or afterwards after the multiplication sign. Don't flip the first fraction. You're flipping the second fraction. So we flip this guy around and we write 5 over 2. So now the problem says 3 over 7 times 5 over 2. And that's how I'm going to find my result. Well, obviously, that's exactly what we did yesterday. Right? It's a multiplication question now, which is why I said it makes a lot of sense for us to be talking about this now, because if we know how to multiply, really, as long as we do those couple steps right, we know how to divide, because it is multiplication. So we've got 3 times 5, that's changing into 15, and 7 times 2, which is changing into 14. That's 15 fourteenths, or if you want to write it as a mixed number, 1 and 1 fourteenth. 14 goes into 15 one time. 1 times 14 is 14, but I need to get the 15, so the remainder is 1, and the denominator stays 14. Here's 3 eighths divided by 12. Now, the only reason this question is here is they want to make sure that you write this guy, 12, as a fraction. So you want to write 12 as 12 over 1 before you start doing the steps here. Once you have it as 12 over 1, then carry through the steps. Change this guy to multiplication and flip this fraction around so it says 1 over 12. So this is 3 eighths times 1 over 12. All right, now, on this diagonal of 1 and 8, nothing can come out there. But on the diagonal of 3 and 12, we can reduce this diagonal by taking out the greatest common factor, which is 3, which is what you can see they've done right here. They've chopped the 3 out of both 3 and 12. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 12 divided by 3 is 4. And then we multiply across. 1 times 1 is 1. 8 times 4 is 32. 
for a final answer of 1 over 32, 1 32nd. Now, here are the questions now, just like we saw with multiplication, that throw the mixed numbers at us. And just like we had with the multiplication, same thing is going to be true with the division. We're not going to work with those mixed numbers. We're going to change them into improper fractions and then use the steps of division to solve from there. So that's what we'll go ahead and do here. We've got 17 thirds divided by 5 fourths in this one. Now, in case you've forgotten, let's see how we got there. 5 times 3 is 15, plus 2 is 17. There's your 17. And remember, the denominator stays 3. In 1 and 1 fourth, 4 times 1 is 4, plus the 1 in the numerator is 5, and the denominator stays 4. So that's how 5 and 2 thirds divided by 1 and 1 fourth changed into 17 thirds divided by 5 fourths. Now use the rules. Flip the second fraction and change it to multiplication. So this is 17 thirds times 4 fifths. Well, as you gathered by the lack of marks there, there's nothing that's going to reduce in this one. So we can just go ahead and multiply. 17 times 4, which is 68, and 3 times 5, which changes into 15. So this is 68 over 15. You can leave it like that, or you can change it back into a mixed number if you want. 15 goes into 68 four times. 4 times 15 is 60, but I needed 68, so my remainder is 8, and the denominator stays the same 15. So 5 and 2 thirds divided by 1 and 1 fourth is 68 fifteenths, or 4 and 8 fifteenths. Here's another one, again with the mixed number, so we're going to make that change. 3 fourths divided by 2 and a half. Alright, so we're going to make that change. We're going to change two and a half here. Two times two is four, plus the one on top gets me five, and it stays over two. Five halves, but this guy that says three fourths still says three fourths. So this is three fourths divided by five over two. Again, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to flip the second fraction and change it to multiplication, which is what you can see they've done going down to this line. This becomes 2 over 5. Well, in this question, we can reduce first. On the diagonal, or reduce now, rather. Um, on the diagonal with the 2 and the 4, we could chop 2 out of each of those. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 4 divided by 2 is 2, which is what you can see they're showing you right here. And then we multiply, and we end up with 3 tenths. So 3 fourths divided by 2 and a half is 3 tenths. Here's 5 and 5 eighths divided by 5 ninths. Again, another mixed number, so another one we're going to have to change. So let's fix that 5 and 5 eighths. 8 times 5 is 40, plus the 5 on top is 45, and it's over 8. So that's 45 eighths. And this whole second part is absolutely fine. It can stay just like it is divided by 5 ninths. Now, the one mistake I don't want you to make is I don't want you to, at this point, look at this question and go, hey, on the diagonal with the 45 and the 9, I could chop 9 out now, couldn't I? No, you can't. You can't do any reducing until after it's been changed to multiplication, meaning you've got to flip the second fraction and change the division sign into multiplication before you can look at any reducing, which is what they're showing you right here. It becomes 9 fifths, and division becomes multiplication. Now on that diagonal, we have 45 and 5, which still reduces, but it wouldn't be the same as 45 and 9, obviously. Obviously, we could chop 5 out of each of those, which is what they're showing you here. The 45 chops 5 out and becomes 9, and the 5 chops 5 out and becomes 1. And we go across, we have 81 eighths, or of course, the equivalent of 10 and 1 eighths. 8 goes into 81 10 times. We we'll leave a remainder of 1 because 10 times 8 is 80, but I needed 81. And the denominator stays 8. 81 eighths, or 10 and 1 eighth.
Okay, here's a story problem, but we're not going to panic about that because it's in the section about dividing. So chances are they're going to ask us to divide here. At least that's what we're going to need to do. Whether we deduce that or not, that's what we're going to end up doing. So let's go ahead and do that. The lifespan of a golden dollar coin is 30 years, while paper currency lasts an average of one and a half years. How many times longer will the golden dollar stay in circulation? So we're figuring out how many times I can feed one and a half into 30. And of course, the way to do that is 30 divided by one and one half. So there's the question we're going to solve. And as you can see right away on the first line of work there, they're making some changes. First off, 30 needs to be written as a fraction. So 30 gets changed into 30 over 1. And then 1 and a half is going to get changed. 2 times 1 is 2, plus the 1 on the top is 3. The denominator stays the same, so that's 3 over 2. So now I have 30 over 1 divided by 3 over 2. Remember, flip the second fraction and change it to multiplication. So it's really 30 over 1 times 2 thirds. Well, now we can start solving here. On the diagonal with the 30 and the 3, you can chop 3 out of each of those guys, which is exactly what they're doing. 30 divided by 3 becomes 10. 3 divided by 3 becomes 1. So this is 20 over 1, or 20, right? which in context of the question means the golden dollar will stay in circulation about 20 times longer than paper currency. It lasts 20 times longer. All right, let's go ahead and finish this off by looking at the check it out examples. In number one, three-fifths divided by one-half. So again, what do we need to do? We need to do two things. We need to change this to multiplication, change the division sign into multiplication, and flip the second fraction. So this is three-fifths times two over one. Three times two is six. Five times one is five. Six-fifths is the equivalent of one and one-fifth. Okay, that was kind of nice. Let's go ahead and take a look at number two. Three-fifths divided by one and two-fifths. So I need to do the same things I just said, but there's one additional thing that needs to be taken care of here. You have a mixed number. You can't have a mixed number. The mixed number is going to have to get changed into an improper fraction before you solve. So let's go ahead and fix it. So it's not going to be three-fifths divided by one and two-fifths going to be 3 fifths divided by 7 fifths. 5 times 1 is 5, plus the 2 in the top makes 7, and the denominator stays the same, which is where my 7 fifths comes from. Again, we're going to flip the second fraction and change it to multiplication. So it becomes times, and it's 5 sevenths. All right, at this point then, we can multiply or on this diagonal with the fives, obviously five will come out of both of those, so we can reduce first, which is what they're going to do. Take out the greatest common factor, which is itself, which makes those of those become one. Then we multiply. Three times one is three. Seven times one is seven. Three sevenths. So three fifths divided by one and two fifths is three sevenths. All right, here's another story problem. So again, we're not going to panic because even though it's a story problem, it's in the section about division. So chances are that means they want us to divide. The average life of a queen ant is approximately three years. The lifespan of a worker ant is three-sevenths of a year. How many times longer will the queen ant live? So they want to know how many times I'm going to be able to feed that three-sevenths into three which is how I'm going to find out how many times longer the queen ant lives. So it's 3 divided by 3 sevenths. But again, as we saw earlier, this cannot be. You're going to have to write this as a fraction, which is 3 over 1. Then flip the second fraction and change it to multiplication. So it's 3 over 1 times 7 thirds. Well, here now on this one diagonal, all right, we could go ahead and multiply, but I see there's threes on that diagonal, which means I can reduce out the greatest common factor first to take it out. 
Well, the greatest common factor of 3, and 3 is obviously 3. So when we take those out, they're both going to become, in essence, 1s, or basically neutral. 1 times 7 is 7. 1 times 1 is 1. 7 over 1 is equivalent to 7. Or in other words, the queen ant will live 7 times longer than the worker ant. Damn that. Dang that lazy queen.